Karen Jeffrey Live. Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today in this video lecture we are going to discuss what is multi computer environment and how the processes in multi computer environment are scheduled and what is load balancing. Okay, so guys, we'll go through each point one by one. So for the full lecture, all of you stay tuned. So guys, the first thing which comes is multi-computer environment. So basically, what is multi-computer environment? As the name indicates, in multi-computer environment, we have multiple computers which are connected to each other using a high-speed network. And all these computers together can work as one single system. So that type of environment is called as multi-computer environment. For example, so in multi-computer environment, we have multiple computers. So basically by multiple computers, I mean we have set of processors and memories. So they do not have any peripherals. They do not have any input output device. Okay. So for example, we have this one processor. It has its memory. Then I have another processor and it has memory then we have another processor it has processor and memory then again we have memory we have processor we have memory again we have processor we have memory so it can be these in this example we are taking one two three four five six it can be many it can be hundreds it can be thousands so in this what is happening so we have separate processor and a memory it has its own memory this processor all the processors are separate and all have their own memory and they all are connected to each other using a interconnect or we call it as bus okay so they all are connected to each other and they all together can work as one single system so what do we call this processing environment we call it as multi computers okay now the next point which comes in this is multi computer scheduling now guys if you are already operating system student all of you must be aware of this term as scheduling basically in scheduling what is there in scheduling it there is an algo which decides like which process will be executed at what time okay so all of you know in each computer we have something called as a ready queue in which all the processes which want to execute are placed and then this processor picks one process from that queue and executes it now which processor uh, which process is picked by the processor for that there are different types of scheduling algorithms right for example in traditional operating system you have round robin scheduling you have shortest job first you have priority scheduling and many schedulings right so basically how the scheduling is done in multi computer environment okay now here also we have multiple processes we have multiple processes p0 p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 and we can go up to p n now how the scheduling is done in multi computer environment now in multi computer environment guys they say once a process okay before we start so here each computer is also called as a node so this is this can be node 0 this can be node 1 this can be node 2 this can be node 3 this can be node 4 this can be node 5 no now here each of this is called as a each of the computer is also called as a node now coming back to the scheduling so suppose this is my ready queue in which we have all the processes from 0 p0 to pn which are ready to be executed now guys they say in multi computer environment once a process has been allocated to the node once a process has been allocated to the node then that node can follow any of the local scheduling algorithm okay for example if this process p0 has been allocated to node 0 the node 0 can imply any of the scheduling algorithm to schedule this 
process okay so in multi computer scheduling the scheduling which is followed is not fixed right what is important here is which process should go to which node which process should go to which node okay and then that node can decide how to schedule that process it can follow round robin it can follow gang scheduling it can follow time shared scheduling it can follow any scheduling that is not important but in multi computer what is more important is to select the processes so that they can be allocated to different nodes and that thing is called as load balancing that thing is called as load balancing once a process has been allocated to node the node can follow any local scheduling algorithm so guys i hope up to here it is clear so till now we studied what is multi computer processing environment it is a processing environment which we have in which we have different nodes and each node has its own processor and its own memory and all these nodes are connected to each other using a interconnect or a bus then we discussed what is multi computer scheduling basically in multi computer scheduling there is no hard and fast rule for scheduling any node can have its own local scheduling okay but what is important in multi computer environment is which process goes to which node okay that is more important and that thing is called as load balancing now what is load balancing so i have to balance the load in such a way so that all the nodes they share almost equal amount of the load means why what we we mean by equal amount of load it means if node 0 has three processes it doesn't mean node 3 should have zero and this should have 10 this should have 2 so all the load should be balanced for example in case i have 1 2 3 4 i have 12 processes and how many nodes i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 so what is a balanced load all the nodes should have two two processes each isn't it so then it will be balanced okay so what is not balanced if one of the node has 10 and other node has 2 and baki rest they have zero right that is a ba badly balanced system now in the next part of this tutorial we will study something called as load balancing in load balancing we follow different processor allocation algorithm means what is processor algo allocation algorithm in this we decide like which process can go to which node so that the load can be balanced okay we also call them as load balancing algo and guys for load balancing we have three different algos load balancing algos so the first one is called as graph deterministic graph theoretical i forget that word graph theoretical deterministic now what is graph theoretical deterministic algo so guys in this we make use of a graph we make use of a graph and in graph each vertex represents each process and a arc between the vertex represent how much the processes are communicating between each other okay so we make a graph then we study a graph so depending upon the graph we balance the load okay so basically as i told you in graph theoretical suppose we have different processes we have process a b c d e f g and h how many are there a b c d e f g h so each process represents a vertex of the graph and they are for example so we have up to h so let us make a graph we have process a we have process b then we have c we have d we have e f g and we have h so in graph deterministic 
algo we have different processes and each process is represents a vertex of the graph and if there is communication between these processes then there is a edge for example if there is a communication between a and c then there is a edge and how many times a and c communicate with each other that can be represented by the weight of the edge means we can put a numeric value on a and c which can which tells how much communication is done between a and c for example a and c communicate with each other two times then if there is a communication between a and b how many times they communicate for example one time if there is a communication between a and d how many times they communicate for example three times c and d communicate once b and f communicate six times d and e communicate two times e and g communicate for example eight times e and f communicate three times f and h communicate eight times so we make a and g and h also communicate two times and d and b also let them communicate once so when we make this graph okay then we study this graph so before we study so we have to allocate so these process for example run on node 1 these processes a b c and d so the nodes are represented with a dotted line suppose a b c d they run at node number 1 e and f they run at node number and g and h they run at node number 3 so what we get we get our theoretical graphs okay which shows what are the different processes on which nodes they are running and how much they are communicating between each other i hope it is clear up to here now guys in this what we observe is we observe so so now if you look at this node one we have processor a b c d so they communicate with each other but their communication is inside node 1 only their communication is inside node 1 only so it should not bother us what we have to observe is how much communication is between the different nodes how much communication is between the different nodes for example node 1 and node 2 so two edges are going two edges are going so how much communication is done between node 1 and node 2 so this is 6 and this is 2 right so how much how much communication is done 8 units okay now again we see how much communication is done between node 2 and node 3 so this is 8 and this is 8 8 plus 8 how much is that 60 so how much total inter node communication is there so 8 plus 16 16 plus 8 gives us 24 means if i allocate process a b c d to node 1 and process e f to node 2 and process g and h to node 3 then total inter node communication is 24 unit now in this algo we have to allocate the nodes the processes to node in such a way so that the inter node communication can be reduced so that the inter node communication can be reduced for example for example i hope guys it is clear up to here now the another way of doing it so here the inter node communication is 24 now i have to reallocate the nodes in such a way so that the inter node communication is minimized okay so okay now then no guys if i allocate them in such a way like this so on node 1 these are the processes which will run and on node 2 so we move the node 3 and on node 2 these are the processes which 
run okay so what is the intercom process communication between these two nodes so what we have here is we have six and we have two so six plus two is eight now in this case our node number three remains under which we do not want okay so now but if you see the internode communication it is a reduced from 24 to 8 so but since we cannot allow a third node to sit idle so we will do some other type of allocation right so now we need to include node 3 also so what is the best way we can do what is the best way we can do so what we can do is yeah so we can put all these processes at node 3 we can put all these processes at node 3 and then so this becomes your node 3 and all these separate we call it as node 1 and this can be node so what we have, how much communication is between this and this? 1 plus 3 plus 1. So that is total 5. How much communication is between this and this node? We have 2 plus 1, 3. Okay. So total how much communication? Again, 8. Okay. So this type of allocation to the different node again reduces the inter-node communication between the different nodes so the algo in which we use a graph and then we calculate the inter node communication is called as graph theoretical deterministic algos so i hope you understand it guys what is the idea behind it basic idea is the communication between the different nodes should be minimized okay that was the first approach the second approach for load balancing is called as Sender initiated heuristic algo. Sender initiated heuristic heuristic algo. Now in this approach, what happens? Suppose we have a load node. That node has many processes which it is executing. And that node is overloaded and that node is overloaded. For example, this node is overloaded. Now, when the load is a uh, node is overloaded, so what it does after some time, it will pick any random node and it will send a request. It will send a request to that node to share the load, isn't it? If you want, you can take a process from me. Isn't it? It can share my share my load and so on. It will send a request, it will pick any random node and it will send a request to that load node, like asking requesting it to take some processes from this node. Okay, so that it can the load can be shared between these two nodes. Now, if that node is free, it will take the processes from this overloaded node and both can be balanced if that node is not free then again after some ran random amount of time again this node will pick some other random node and again it will request that node to take some load from this present node okay so it will send a request to it will pick a random node and it will send request to that random node asking it to share some to take some processes from this overloaded no. So this thing is called as sender initiated heuristic algo. Now guys, the third algo, it is opposite to this. Okay. So instead of sender, it has a receiver initiated. C-E-I-V-E. Receiver initiated heuristic algo. Now here, a overloaded node sends a request it picks a random node and sends a request to that node asking it to 
requesting it to share some load. So in the receiver initiated approach, so we have some underloaded load. So what we have is under loaded node. So what it does? What it does? Okay. So it asks the overload. It will pick a overloaded load. Okay. Or it will pick a random node from all the nodes and it will ask, give me some work. Give me work. W-O-R-K. Share load with me. load with me so what is this in this a receiver is underloaded so it will pick up some random node and it will ask do you have any work because i am free give me some work so it is opposite of sender initiated heuristic algo we call it as receiver initiated heuristic algo so guys i think it, it is a long video so guys i hope i made myself clear so in this video tutorial we discussed what is multi-computer environment Okay, so what is how scheduling is done in multi computers? Basically, scheduling is not important in multi computers. What is more important is the load balancing. And once the process comes to one node, okay, so then that node can decide it can apply any of the scheduling algorithm in order to run that process. So then we discussed load balancing and we discussed three different approaches for load balancing. One was graph theoretical deterministic approach. Another advice is sender initiated response and other one last one is receiver initiated heuristic approach. So guys, I hope everything is clear with you and if you like our videos, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading more and more advanced operating system topic videos Okay, in next couple of weeks and couple of days. So guys, thanks for watching and all of you stay tuned.